In the workshop, a Cotswold Heritage Atlas Steam Plant Part 9, fitting the water tank and hand pump, making the water piping and mounting the steam turret. In this clip, I'm using a piece of mahogany as a straight edge so I can make sure that the water tank is in line with the engine. And then very carefully, using a felt tip pen, I make a mark through the holes down onto the baseboard. And here you see the four black spots which are going to be the mounting holes for the water tank. Using my rechargeable Proxon motor tool, I'm drilling holes down into the baseboard. And these holes are one eighth of an inch in diameter. And in this clip, I'm threading the holes using a 4BA tap. But I'm not threading the holes all the way to the bottom. And there's a good reason for this. Wood is a much softer material than metal, as obviously everyone knows. So now what happens, as I screw the 4BA bolts into position, once they get about three quarters of the way down into the hole, they tighten up, because the bolts cut the thread into the wood for the rest of the way. I have a collection of screwdrivers, these are Barco screwdrivers and they're really good, so I save them for best, and I'm using one of these which fits the slot exactly, and therefore it will not chew up the head of the bolt. So that's the water tank just about mounted. The next job is to measure between the water outlet of the tank and the inlet to the pump, and cut a piece of copper pipe to the right length. And once I silver soldered the unions on the end of this piece of copper pipe, I connected the pump to the tank, which held the pump in the correct position on the baseboard, ready to be mounted. I had to bend the pipe slightly so that the union on the tank lined up perfectly with the one on the pump. And after tightening the unions at both ends, it's time to mark the position for the pump on the baseboard, and for this, I'm using a right angle scriber. I don't wish to criticise the design of this pump, because they're very good and they're made by a friend of mine anyway. But I wish he'd make them with a larger base, because the holes are too close to the main barrel of the pump. So when I finally come to fit this unit, I have to use a screwdriver that is physically smaller than the bolt heads. More about that shortly. So now, using my excellent Proxon motor tool once again, I'm drilling holes into the baseboard so that I can mount the pump. I really recommend these Proxon motor tools. Even when the tool is set at a low speed, there's still plenty of torque, and in no time at all, four holes appear in the baseboard. I drill the holes using a number 48 drill, and now I'm threading the holes using a 6BA tap. And you will notice that this time, the tap is going all the way into the hole. And this is because I can't put a lot of pressure on the bolts, because of the position of the holes in the mounting plate, and as you can see, even with this small screwdriver, it's marking the side of the barrel. And because the screwdriver's too small, I can't put too much pressure on the bolt heads either. But eventually, everything's okay, the parts are mounted to the baseboard, so it's time to bend the piping. I'm making this piece of pipe in two halves. This is 530 seconds or 4mm diameter pipe. And to bend it, I'm using this really excellent microcosm pipe bender, which makes very neat and tight bends. I want this piece of pipe to follow the contours of the engine's plinth. And as you can see here, it's pretty close. And after silver soldering the coned unions on the end, it looks very neat. So here's the principle. In the middle of this piece of pipe, which forms the feed from the water pump's outlet to the inlet clack on the boiler, I've put a union. Not only does this make assembling the piping easier, it looks good as well. Two spanners are needed to tighten this union. I'm using the barco in the middle and another spanner at each end. In this clip, you can see the complexity of the pipe run. It comes from the clack valve on the boiler, round the back of the condenser. Then around the back of the engine, it connects to the other pipe from the water pump. Time now to test it to make sure there are no leaks. I've speeded up this clip so you can see the water level dropping in the tank. The pump felt a bit dry. The lubrication of the ram is by the water, but the other moving parts needed a bit of oil. This is my general lubricating oil mixture, which is 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil. Once again in this clip, I've speeded up the process just so you can see the water going down quicker. And similarly, you can see the water going up the water gauge glass quicker too. The water pump is fine, but it needs a handle on it because there's no pressure in the boiler at the moment. When the boiler is in steam and running at £60 per square inch, it will be much easier to pump the water with an extension handle. The time has come to mount the turret onto the baseboard, so I'm using the rule of measure twice and drill once. 
I'm temporarily disconnecting the turret from the piping so that I can move it out of the way. All I have to do now is drill a couple of pilot holes on the black crosses. Once again, this is a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill bit that's in my Proxon motor tool. I know it sounds like I'm giving Proxon a lot of plugs, and indeed I am because they're very good. And the way I do it, I can be honest, because I actually bought these, I wasn't given them. Here are a couple of brass 2BA bolts, and I'm going to use these from underneath the baseboard to hold the turret in place. What I had to do was drill upwards from underneath the baseboard to enlarge the pilot holes, then counterbore the holes just by using a larger drill because the bolts weren't long enough to go all the way through the baseboard. What I need to do now is put some cladding on the main steam pipe from the superheater to the turret. The rest of the pipe is okay, it's out of the way. But this particular piece of pipe gets extremely hot and it's quite close to the operator's hands. Cladding the steam pipe in string like this doesn't do much for the thermal efficiency, but it does stop the operator from burning their hands because this pipe really does get hot. I'd just like to say that this process took a lot longer than on the short video clip that you just watched. This string is quite hairy. When you put it on, it's got lots of sort of hairs sticking out of it, pretty much like a girlfriend I used to have. And I used a blowtorch to burn the hairs off the pipe, not off the girlfriend. This is the first coat of paint. I've used Humbrol Ivory for this one. I just think it looks a bit more, I don't know, industrial revolution than the brilliant white paint that I normally use. It needs another coat to finish off the job. This is just a clip of the paint drying. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.